hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. I hope you have a beautiful weekend coming up. Today I want to talk about hurt and betrayal. I have nothing really much to talk about it except, except the experience of thousands of thousands of people who have health related problems. And when we break down their physical health and we start talking about emotional health, there are so many people out there. We're human beings, negative emotions are real. Most human beings will experience hurt, they may experience betrayal, let down and all the negative emotions at some point in life. Some people overcome these negative emotions very quickly. Some can just bounce back, some use it as a lesson to improve their life, but some stay stuck. That doesn't mean you're weak. Some are in situations where they cannot express how they feel. They feel locked. They feel caged up because of the environment that they're in. What we need to understand today, the non-expression of negative emotions eventually builds up into disease. We know this for sure. It's documented scientifically. You have top doctors around the world saying release emotional anger, release emotional tension. It is causing heart problems. It is causing problems with your immune system. So there are many, many ways of learning to forgive. These are not difficult things. Learning how to release your hurt. I know people today in the age group of 35, 40 who are still unable to forgive or let go of incidents that happened in school. You know, they were bullied, they were scarred, people put them down. And like I said, it's not easy, but what do we do? Something that's working really well, everyone finds their own coping mechanisms. Hopefully those coping mechanisms are never gonna be alcohol and drugs because that will never solve your problem. And after a while, even the alcohol stops working and you move from you know, a little bit of drugs to a lot of drugs or softer drugs to harder drugs and that eventually ruins you. And the other person wins. The whole point about expression is there are many ways to do it. Some people meditate, some people chant, some people pray. Something that's working really well, and we've been trying this over the last couple of years because people say, hey, listen, I can't talk to that person. When we say, go and discuss how you feel with that person. Some people have issues with their parents. Some children have issues with their parents. They feel suppressed, but they don't know how to speak to their parents. So what's working really well, and I want to share that today, is the power in writing. Write a letter to the person who has hurt you. Could be your father, your mother, your sister, your ex, your colleague, whatever it is. Whether you send them that letter or that email, that's up to you. But start with the first process of writing what is in your heart on that piece of paper. Really express yourself. Of course, you can do it the right way. You can, do it make, you can make the letter very abusive and just vomit and project all of your past emotions on that person and it's not really going to help you. Or you can very assertively in a respectful way, even though they hurt you, because remember, you are bigger than the other person. You don't need to go down to the level of that person and be like them. And you write to that person, dear John, example, this is what you did many years ago and it hurt me. I just want to let you know that your actions have caused me pain. And you may feel that this exercise is, is going to be useless. It sounds that way when we talk about it. But when you really start doing it, people come back and say, Luke, you know, I started crying when I was writing that. There was anger. I trembled. And after writing the letter, I just felt like there was a whole weight that lifted off me. It's not solved my problem, but it's the first step of finally feeling better after years. We've got kids, even in the age of 30 and 40, to write to their parents. If there was something that's still troubling them, write, dear dad, you know, you know, I, I appreciate X, Y, Z, but I really don't like what you said or what you did. It's really hurt me as a child and X, Y, Z. Expression is everything. If you don't express it, it is going to build up in you. It is. Having a lot of friends to vent out all of that, that's all good, but it doesn't bring you healing. It just brings you moments of feeling good because you've been able to get it off your chest. But when you go back home or you're in that environment of your dad or your mom or your sibling or your, your lover or whatever it is that causes you pain, everything comes up again. You can't have friends around you 24 seven. You have to, everyone has to go through the difficult yet the beautiful process of recovery and healing, which is trying to learn a lesson from what has happened and number two, expressing to that person. I have a couple of people right now who have written letters over the last two or three months to everyone who's hurt them. And not one of them, not one of them have said that this exercise was useless. A lot of them said, we actually sent the emails to people. We've actually sent it to them. And we've asked also, we don't need a reply. I just wanted to let you know how I feel about this. So usually, 
if we waited for so long for that to happen, that's why when someone hurts you right away, okay, don't react immediately. Like if someone hurts me right now, hopefully I'll be mindful enough not to get angry and react. Sometimes I do, I'm human, but I'll let it, I'll let it be for a while. I'll go back, I'll reflect, I'll think, and then I will go back to that person for sure. I will go back and tell them how I felt and what they did was wrong and decide how I want to keep the relationship going forward. But I took action. That action is not going to build up with negative emotions of like, I feel like a doormat. I feel like a victim. I should have said this. How dare he says that? No, mostly the people who hurt us don't even know they've done it. You know, most of them. Most people who hurt people never do it intentionally. It doesn't mean it's a good thing. It just means that they're blind or the way you see life, they see it differently and they don't think that the things they're doing hurts you. But you see it completely different. The same way you do certain things, which you may think are right, actually hurt other people. So that's why expression and communication is so important for us to move forward. Or you can be that victim constantly thinking, oh, and you look at their lives and they're living their lives and they're enjoying themselves and you get more angry because, you know, you're like, they hurt me and they're enjoying their life. In most cases, these people don't even know they've hurt you. Unless, of course, they've done something which you know and they're aware of. Which is why the only way forward, remember, anything that you suppress has to come up. It has to come up at some point or another. I'm dealing now with an 85-year-old cancer patient. She's been with us for about eight years. Long journey, physical, chemo, radiation, trying to get it emotionally. Right now, the tumor's in her brain and it's expanding. She's deteriorating day by day. But what's coming out is years and years of suppression. The things that she says to her family members, to her colleagues, the stuff that you never thought could exist in her after spending eight years with her is coming out. It has to come out. If it doesn't come out in disease, it will come out in words or in hurt or something else. My point is, why keep it in so long? Why? Remember, if you want to make any change in life, you're going to win something and you're going to lose something. Whenever there is win, there is also loss. Remember that. You cannot win it all. You can never win it all. Okay? If you want to race, someone had to lose. You want a position in your company, someone who was gunning for the same position had to lose. Where, is, where there is winning, there is losing. So remember, today if you have to put down your ego and pride to improve your health and feel better, yeah, maybe you gotta lose a little bit of that holding on, that rigidity to go and tell someone how you feel or to ask for respect or to ask to be treated differently. If you don't ask, you don't get it. You can't be a victim and you know, keep complaining if you don't ask for change, which is why we say MTA, move to action. There is always action you can take. Let me give you an example. I have a couple right now and the husband's going through something, the wife, and it's a toxic relationship. They have a kid, they have two kids. And when I tell them, like they say, oh, we don't have a choice, so we have kids. You still have a choice. You still have a choice. If one of you died tomorrow, there would still be a single parent and a child. My point is, are you willing to come out of your doubt and overcome your fears to make that choice because your health matters to you? Or are you going to stay stuck in that miserable relationship, hurting one another and your child has the wrong environment? At the same time, if you have to be in that relationship because it is about the kid, then you need to drop the ego and pride and learn to accept one another for who, who y'all are. You'll have to bring about acceptance. Maybe y'all don't like certain things about each other, but if you are choosing to stay in that relationship, you still have to learn to accept or let go of certain feelings because you made a choice to stay where you are. So there is always a choice. My point is again, back to expression. We have to learn how to express. We're so afraid of expressing because we'll be judged, we'll be ridiculed, people will form opinions. Let me tell you, even if you're not expressing, people are judging you, they're ridiculing you, and they are forming opinions. Probably your best friends, probably your family members. It exists, it's called reality. It's called humanity. So the sooner you arise above not caring about what people think about you, their opinions. Of course, sometimes people say something and you need to change because they're right, make the change. Don't be egoistic. But my point is, only you lose at the end of the day. And then a lot of parents say, I did it for my child. I took shit from my wife. Or I took crap from my husband because I did it for my child. Most of those children are never appreciative. They were like, we would have been better off if we didn't have to see y'all fight every day. Y'all should have split a long time ago. My point is, what you do is your call. Everyone's uh, intensity of problems in their relationships are different and no one has the experience to tell you how to run your life and your relationship. 
But yes, we can tell you that you have a choice and you need to revisit those choices and learn to express. <clears throat> you cannot be afraid of expression. Sometimes expression may bring on physical violence. You may be slapped when you express something to someone. All the more reasons and all the more inspiration and motivation to get out of that toxic relationship. But you had to get the slap in order for you to get slapped out of your victim mode and now make a choice. But if you yet choose to live with that, the fault lies with you, which is why expression is so important. And as you go to express, allow for expression from other people. Allow for expression from your parents, from your lovers, from your partners, from your bosses. It's not one way. It's not one way. It takes a lot of courage to express and to allow for expression. But I can tell you right now, people out there who are suffering with diseases, all mostly have connections with emotional <clears throat> and mental trauma in their lives or incidents. If they only learn to start addressing them, the first step through expression, write a letter, talk to them face to face, send them a voice note or write a letter, tear it up, start the process of expression. And I can guarantee you, you will feel a positive change. There is no diet that can do this work for you. There is no magic pill that can do this work. There is no antidepressant that can do this work. And your life gets better. So whoever you are from whichever country in the world, wherever you're watching this video today, if there is any hurt, start writing it down, expressing it. Better still, say, sit, I want to talk to you about something. Could have happened a long time ago. I remember about a couple of months ago, I wrote a letter to my dad. You know, I just wrote a little bit about something that I didn't like and I didn't want to tell him on his face because I was afraid he'd get hurt. I wrote a letter and he replied to it. And I can't tell you how I felt and I can't tell you how he felt. It's beautiful. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. The other person may just not respond or may respond back to you harshly. But don't express with expectation. Don't express with an expectation that because I'm doing it, I want sympathy. No, express because you want to release. That's your only intention. Expectation brings disappointment. If you're doing it, revisit your intention. I am doing it with an intention to heal and recover, not with an expectation that the other person will change. They never changed before. There's no reason they're going to change now. So practice expression. That's your, week. That's your weekend exercise. Have a great weekend, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you.